Good day everyone, how are you? Welcome to the 5th edition of Say What, Speak and Serve Initiative National Debate Competition which is running under the theme Nurturing Ideas for a Healthier Society Through Debate. It is All Systems Go. Many salutations and many thanks to our supporting partner, which is our main supporting partner, which is the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. So right now for this round two, we have got four institutions that are right here with me. And the four institutions are Chinoyi University of Technology, Lupani State University, Wulawayo Polytechnic, and Midland State University. So without wasting any time, first of all, we'd just like to introduce you to our lovely and superb looking adjudicators. Okay, so without wasting any time, let's get in right into it. And please do not forget to engage with us and tell us about your views about the motion and also the team that you are rooting for. So without wasting any time, we just have to give you info, a bit of information about the motion that we are going to be going through. A safe space is defined as a place or environment in which a person or a category of people can feel confident that they will not be exposed to discrimination, criticism, harassment, or any other emotional or physical harm. With the motion, this house believes that the creation of safe spaces for the LGBTQI plus community will do more harm than good. I'll repeat. With this motion, this house believes that the creation of safe spaces for the LGBTQI plus community will do more harm than good. We start with the Prime Minister. Prime Minister can come forward and we can begin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Prime Minister of this house and this house believes that uh, that, that uh, the creation of safe spaces for the LGBTQI plus community will do more harm than good. Now, the definition, uh, the key uh, term that we would like to define this uh, notion is the LGBTQI community and these are people that identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, etc. Now, uh, the redefined motion is now that uh, this house believes that the um, uh, creation of safe spaces for uh, people people who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer would, uh, would do more harm than good. Now, the most important issue in this debate is that the LGBTQI uh, community has been facing social, in social injustice and we want to review the effectiveness of our uh, safe spaces uh, to the emancipation of the LGBTQI community. Now, our first point um, to uh, uh, review and see the weaknesses of uh, safe spaces is as follows. Now, the first point is creating safe spaces uh, is a direct acceptance of the social injustice to, uh, social injustices towards the LGBTQI community. Now, the heteronormative society that we live in wants to box the LGBTQI community, uh, community and when we accept these safe spaces, it means that we're accepting breadcrumbs for the LGBTQI community. What we want is emancipation. What we want is true freedom for the LGBTQI community. And if we accept safe spaces, it means we're generally accepting that they should be uh, boxed in uh, places that they cannot be seen and they should not uh, uh, they should not be uh, behaving like normal people, uh, like the hetero, uh, the heterosexual people uh, behave. Now, our second point as a de uh, as a as a as the uh, government is um, uh, creating safe spaces defeats the core purpose of uh, the gay rights movement. Now, we see that um, uh, we want uh, we want uh, the LGBTQI community to fight for justice, not just.
just to get instant gratification from safe spaces because safe spaces in essence are meant for them to express themselves freely without judgment in a boxed uh, situation but you want them to go out and uh, accept uh, and actually uh, attain true freedom so that they can actually uh, express themselves freely just like anyone else and we see that uh, black people uh, in history did not create safe spaces uh, to uh, fight colonialism they actually went out in the front and fought uh, uh, colonialism ahead front and they actually attained um, uh, independence so we want this for the LGBTQI community now our third point is that um, creating safe spaces inhibits self-expression now uh, by definition safe spaces are little uh, a little uh, a little uh, uh, spaces that our people uh, can express themselves freely uh, in this context the LGBTQ community now when we give them little spaces that are boxed in it means they cannot freely express themselves they can only feel like themselves in uh, a couple minutes uh, where they are uh, meet up with uh, other LGBTQ community uh, but they cannot uh, they have to box themselves out when they go out into the reward but you don't want that for the LGBTQI community we want them to be free we want them to express themselves whenever they want LGBTQI community deserves to share their love stories just like what hetero, uh, hetero, uh, hetero uh, sexual people do uh, LGBTQI community they have to share their love stories whenever wherever and however they want without judgment so we believe that uh, the LGBTQI community should get uh, mainstream um, uh, mainstream support and should actually go out into the uh, world and actually fight for their rights so in short society needs to listen society needs to unlearn uh, their prejudices against the LGBTQ community because it is harming them the harm of say uh, safe spaces is that it's only instant gratification and what we're fighting for is true uh, freedom and true uh, rights uh, rights for the LGBTQ community with this that is my case thank you so much sir leader of opposition as the opening opposition and the opening leader we're going to argue that safe spaces are good and uh, they are good for the LGBTQI uh, plus community uh, where we say that a safe zone is a space where expressing and exploring gender identity and roles is done freely it is not uh, it does not conform to any geographical confirmation or any geographical isolation which brings me to extraneous refutations where the Prime Minister stated that uh, boxing of uh, the LGBTQ plus I plus uh, community is uh, infringing their rights where we're saying that we are not boxing anyone because we are not following any lines of latitude and longitude. So a hospital, a school can be a safe zone. It can be a safe zone for the, for the, for the, uh, for the community and a community at large. So uh, the Prime Minister also stated that accepting social injustice uh, is, is wrong where we're saying we accept social injustice against uh, the community and that is the reason why we are here arguing that we should uh, have uh, safe spaces for uh, the, this community. So uh, going on to my speech, uh, I am going to uh, highlight the, the, the points that we can implement, the methods that we can implement to make sure that there are safe spaces and then state the indicators uh, that uh, will show that there are safe spaces and uh, the what uh, it really solves. So, uh, to Point start with the information uh, denied, uh, we are going to argue that uh, if we could use sustainable livelihood approach, uh, we could then uh, attain a, an era where this community is accepted. So, sustainable livelihood approach is a method of uh, analyzing and changing the lives of people experiencing a disadvantage. It is a participatory method uh, based on the recognition that all people Clarity. and the abilities and assets uh, that uh, that everybody has the abilities and assets that can be developed to help them improve their lives. So, we want this community to focus on what they have so that they can they can be uh, uplifted in the community. And if they are uplift, uplift, uplifted, then they can be better accepted to enter into Point the society. Uh, then uh, I'm going to go to the indicators of the sustainability and resilience. So uh, if the education system has equality, then we can say that that is a self uh, zone. Then if there is uh, freedom to express, uh, normal behavior where uh, sexual choice and uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is a, a form of normal behavior, uh, where equality and uh, equality in getting and keeping jobs is also a uh, a form of uh, an indicator of sustainability and resilience, then equality in entry and exit uh, to value chains and markets is also a indicator of sustainability and resilience. So, so, okay. 
Oh, so okay. what happens after they leave the safe zones, please? Could you tell us? Uh, we are saying that it is not uh, confirmed to any lines of longitude and latitude. We're saying that it is not geography. We are saying that a community can be made a safe zone. If it criminalizes uh, homosexuality, then it is a safe zone. We make a country a safe zone. So a country and the, the globe at large can be made a safe zone. So uh, uh, thank you. Then uh, we are going to these strategies to make the LGBTQ, LGBTQI plus have a uh, sustainable livelihoods. And we're going to do that by uh, skills building, uh, support with employment and jobs, and uh, microfinance programs to start and run uh, businesses that are owned by uh, the LGBTQI plus community and skills to start and run programs. Clarity. Then, denied. Then uh, going uh, over to what that solves, we're saying that it solves that uh, uh, these guys can no longer go to the use of illicit drugs since uh, they are now free to express themselves. They can no longer, uh, they are no longer required to attempt suicide and uh, they no longer experience homelessness and anxiety. And uh, with this, we are very proud to be on the opposing side. Okay, uh, I think I just want to make something clear to everyone. I'm sure most, some of you may not have read the ruse. Please, for the first speaker, this first speaker has four minutes protection time and there will be no point of information. Are we clear? Yes, there will be no point of information for the first speaker. It's only the second speaker that has allowed those points of information. And the second speaker will from all teams who only have one minute protection time, the first minute, and then the two minutes free time in which m any member can raise a point of information. And one last minute, which is protection time, no P points of information. And also, members are allowed, you are allowed to decline more than two points of information, but the third one, so it will be accepted. I'm sure that everyone has taken note of that. All right, so moving forward, it is the Deputy Prime Minister. Compliments of the day to you all, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Deputy Prime Minister of the government side. I'm here to rebut, rebuild, and give you a new argument. Now, the leader of the opposition of the opposition came here and told you that safe space cannot be just longitude line but can also be a hospital and a school. This is what we as the government side are saying. We don't want just a hospital or a school to be the safe space for the LGBTQ community but we want the whole world to be a safe space for the LGBT community. We don't want them to be able to be comfortable to express themselves at a hospital and a school and then go back home to a community that discriminates against them. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader came here and told us about freedom of expression. This is exactly what we are saying. There are better solutions to solving the problem in society with the LGBT community. And such better solutions do not include safe zones. Why? Because safe zones are only a temporary solutions that do not solve the matter at hand. They are only, like said by my speaker, they only give satisfaction for a short period of time Pure and then they go back to the community where they have to deal with the same discrimination. POI rejected. Uh, the leader of the opposition side came here and said that uh, they are not long should lines, but rather would like to be the whole globe to be the safe zone. Well, I would say to the leader of the opposition, welcome to the government side. What we are saying is eliminate safe zones and create a world where the LGBT community doesn't need a safe zone. Have you ever heard of a safe zone for the heterosexual? No. Why? Because they can freely accept themselves wherever, whenever they are. Now, I'll, re I'll rebuild the arguments. POI rejected the arguments that they tried to distract from my prime minister. Um, safe spaces are like a glamorous closet. What we are doing is we are giving just a big name to the closet that the LGBTQ community has already been in. We don't want them to express themselves out as at a safe space, but rather let the whole globe be their safe place. There are better solutions to solving this, better solutions such as awareness campaigns. We can make awareness campaigns Pure to the community eye. accepted. Madam Speaker, confirm that the creation of safe spaces has um, has given effective has given effective ways into coping the problems associated with the LGBTQI. So, so they have given temporary effective ways. Thank you.
There are better solutions such as awareness campaigns. We can educate people that LGBT is not an abnormal condition, but rather a normal condition. And these people have equal rights as heterosexual people. We can Pure. have denied. We can have legal reinforcements reinfor for people that discriminate, criticize, and bully the LGBT community. By doing this and having other better solutions, we will actually be helping the LGBT community rather than creating temporary solutions such as safe spaces. The LGBT community does not have to live in a world of their own for them to be able to truly express themselves. Rather than separating them from the rest of the people, let's acknowledge and accept them. Let the community know that it is okay to be gay, it is okay to be lesbian, it is okay to be transgender, it is okay to be equal, it is okay to be queer. And let the community be educated in a way that they can see these people as one of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, us as the government side strongly support this motion, saying that LGBT, LGBTQ class community is not a choice but rather a condition that they are born with just like each and every other citizens in the country that the whole country should be a safe zone thank you thank you deputy prime minister now it's time for the deputy leader of opposition good day to you all um i would like to start by um shedding some light on uh, the actual motion it says this house believes the creation of safe, safe spaces for the LGBTQI plus community will do more harm than good. It seems the government side is not clear on that, as they should be showing us the harm that safe spaces is uh, actually posing to the globe. They did not actually elaborate on that. Uh, to move on into my speech, um, I would like to redefine a safe space. We're saying this is a space where an individual is able to be themselves, to express themselves without discrimination, without, without judgment, harassment, any physical harm or emotional harm, which means they can politically express themselves, which is globally, and it seems people are confusing it with a safe zone which you can actually leave. But we're saying a safe space, you don't actually have to leave. It's a space where every single time you're feeling safe, wherever you are, whoever you are with. Um, I would like to elaborate on what my partner said about the sustainable life approach, which states that everyone has an ability, everyone has an asset to contribute to the community. So I'm saying let us incorporate the LGBTQI plus community into the already existing um, community such that they're safe always. Let them contribute such that we actually have more efficiency. We have more people contributing to the economy. And it's benefit, not at this time. It's benefiting everyone and we can all coexist. We need to, I'm actually challenging people to um, engage in a kind of thinking that is embracing and accepting that you can have a different point of view, you can coexist and still benefit from each other. So, um, I'll take your point of information. No? Do you think a queer person in Zimbabwe can actively say they are queer in a religious uh, home? That is what I'm saying. We can implement policies and methods that actually challenge people to think in a more embracing way, such that it's a safe place where you accept them and allow them to actually express themselves and be themselves. Uh -huh. um, returning to my point, um, I was saying we should incorporate them into the existing um, uh, economy because it's defined by social structures and cultural structures, old ones, Point which... Yes. Are you aware that safe space is a space and the definition of space is an area that someone can freely express themselves and not a globe or a country? It is like your partner already said, a hospital or a school. Yes, and these spaces could be many spaces across the globe. We're saying the hospital, um, a debate set up like this one, uh, a hospital, uh, a parking lot. These are all spaces. We're talking about spaces globally. That's why I'm saying we're covering the whole globe. Um, as I was saying, we should um, be challenging people to adopt a more understanding um, 
thinking that um, and we should understand that uh, social structures and cultural structures are not set in stone and can actually be changed to serve us now because these social structures and cultural structures no, are re um, not absolute truths but re relevant truths which are no longer relevant in this day and age where the LGBTQI community exists. Time's up. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. So that's all we had from the opening government and the opening opposition. So coming up next will be the closing government and closing opposition. Many thanks to our main supporting partner, which is the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. And this show is proudly brought to you by Say What. And right now, let's take a short break. We'll be back. Welcome back to, it is the fifth edition of the national debate competition, hashtag Sassy Debate, and hashtag Debate for Health. And for those watching us, please do engage with us on all social media platforms. It's Say What on Twitter, Say What Organization. You can also go to our website where there's quite a lot of things uh, with on Say What or Say What org.co.zw. You can also go to our YouTube where there's quite a lot of content for you. Many thanks to our supporting partner, which is the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. So to those that are joining us, I will just gladly repeat the motion for you. With this motion, this house believes that the creation of safe spaces for the LGBTQI community will do more harm than good. So right now it's time for the closing opposition and closing government to actually state the effect. So starting with member of government, you can come forward. Well, I'm member of government and my duty will be to give extension and more analysis to the debate. So panel, it should be important that we note we're existing in a world where the LGBTQ++ community has been existing around oppression such that it has been prolonged and they've started to surround themselves with the symbols of freedom rather than the freedom that they want. And this is in personified as safe spaces. So we believe that creating safe spaces to that end is harmful and problematic. So our extension is based on context, primarily the context, because we feel the opening half did a very good job in stating how safe spaces look like, but they didn't specify the context, and that is much of our analysis. So to get into detail, this debate exists in societies where people are influenced by their social, cultural, religious, and political beliefs to make laws. And for example, in Zimbabwe today, the society is so conservative such that the laws themselves are eminent and expressed in conservative literature or conservative language. And this also comes with the criminalization of the LGBTQI+. So we think, so we think, therefore by creating a safe space, does more harm than good because it is a state of retreating into a hiding corner. And when they get into a hiding corner, they, they temporarily solve their problem or they temporarily ignore their problem, but it still exists outside broadly. Because in a safe space, it is the collective of them. So it's like they're in a closet together. So no matter how safe they feel together in that closet, they are still going to eminently walk out of the same harm. So the, I think the change itself is bigger. And the harm there is because their problem still exists. Their oppression still exists. And that is the biggest, that is the biggest harm that we ought to show in this particular debate. Then furthermore in our extension, we have to characteristically understand then what is the harm with them being in these spaces. When they're in these spaces, they're having discussions together. They're not critical of each other, but equally they're not facing their problem. They're not engaging the broader society in terms of transforming and changing the norms that exist. For example, the heteronormal system that already exists because of the laws, political beliefs, and religious beliefs that already exist, they are not engaging. And the cause of this fear, the cause of this lack of engagement is because of the fear of victimization. The fear of victimization that they are fleeing into safe spaces, and still whenever they're in safe spaces, the fear of victi the victimization itself is not dismantled. So we believe that safe spaces do not necessarily dismantle the oppressive system that they're fleeing from but it perpetuates it, it prolongs it, and keeps their fears existing. So we believe that's more, that's more harmful to the LGBTQI plus plus society, community, I mean to say. And then secondly, the ultimate goal of the LGBTQI is to gain freedom. 
and the pursuit of that freedom can be quantified as a struggle. And a struggle moves from point A to point B. And so we believe that by going into a safe space, they don't necessarily move, but they are stagnant and remain in the same space. And when they remain in the same space, the problem still remains. The threat of oppression still remains. They are not free to express themselves. And in that particular end, we think safe spaces still give them false hope and false progress, and they are not a genuine indictment on how they are faring in fighting for their rights and for their freedom to express themselves. So in that particular end, we still find that safe spaces do more harm than good. Then we move on forward to understanding what the freedom that they long for looks like. This work vis-a-vis -vis to also bring out what the harms look like and to establish definitely the most outstanding argument here that this is the harm. So when we look at the freedom, we are saying they also want the freedom to engage. They also want the freedom to walk freely. They want the freedom not to be victimized. They want the freedom not to worry. So in this particular instance, we say that whenever they go into the safe spaces, they will still be limited to worries. With this, we have a proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you so much, Member of Government. Now it's time for Member of Opposition. The past is the history, so we should learn from it. The future is a mystery, so we should actually develop a better world. Today is the present, so we should capitalize on actually engaging and actually having fellow citizens amongst us in the society through the creation of what we call safe spaces, I close quote. Uh, Moving on as the opposition, we actually uh, saw that the technicalities of everyone which came in the first half, the proposition team didn't actually, actually understand what this debate is all about. Firstly, I would actually want to uh, bring a framework of this debate into actually making people understand that this debate is all about actually uh, promoting this safe spaces. Is it a good state or is it bad? Uh, then, moving on as the side arm. Um, Opposing, we are saying that these spaces have actually promoted a better fundamental into the society. How? This is what we are going to tell you. We are going to tell you that these safe spaces, as the name pro pronounced, actually have actually created uh, an implicit and an anti-bullying policies. How? Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at a perspective that these people have been secluded from the what? From the society. And hence, by creation of these safe spaces, we have actually uh, led to gender orientation in the space where everyone has to fit in, gender sexuality, choice, alliances. We have actually created a space which brings about good to these fellow brothers of ours. Then I had again, actually, in the debate of the first technical technicalities. Uh, the second speaker who, from the proposition side came here and spoke about the issue about these people that, that these people are mentally uh, distressed. No, ladies and gentlemen, what we are saying is that these people are not mentally distressed, but these are people which are amongst our society which have actually have sexually oriented themselves at a specified orientation. Hence, what are we saying? We have actually created safe spaces in order for these people to actually be juvenile amongst us, so that we actually breed better sexual alliances. What again we are breeding? We are actually uh, catering out anti-bullying things that are there, that are occurring amongst them, and actually when they fit into the society, what do they actually bring? These people, remember, ladies and gentlemen, everyone has got something to offer to the society. Whether it is actually employment, whether it is actually to bring about stakeholders into act, then, ladies and gentlemen, we are saying that these people have actually been created safe spaces which have actually created a better world and a better society for us all. Then, moving on, we lo looking at what the Deputy Prime Minister came here. He said that uh, on the issues that that uh, these safe spaces are not zones, actually, which are uh, which claim that these zones are parameted. No, ladies and gentlemen, what we are saying that these safe spaces are a collective uh, longitudinal and vertical place that has no zone, meaning that these safe spaces seclude no one because we are saying that these safe places, these people are amongst the society. And what are we saying about these safe spaces? These safe spaces are providing uh, these uh, other fellow brothers of us with 
better uh, sharing conversation, juvenile society, people who are actually able to relate to each other and actually be able to comprehend each other. Uh, with this, I've never been proud to oppose. Thank you so much, Member of Opposition. Now, the second speaker, the second speaker from from the government can now come from the closing government can now come forward and let us know that it is in this case where POIs are now allowed. Panel, three things that you're going to get from my speech. I'm going to further elaborate on what Liam gave you today and I'm going to rebut and summarize what the debate was like. But we must know that three major arguments came from the the, uh, the opposition bench. The first argument was on what are these safe uh, zones. We think it becomes problematic for, for you to try and argue a global context when you don't consider that the likes of America, South Africa, G Botswana, all have legalized a whole, like the LGBTQ rights. So that means you don't need safe zones because these people are, are allowed to actually self-actualize and to be a part of a community. So the whole idea that they are a global aspect that we get from opening opposition is very problematic and it actually is dealt with by Liam's case. But secondly, they talk about this idea from closing opposition of anti bullying we think it, it's problematic for you to say that we want to create this space for anti-bullying when the only people that are in those spaces are the victims and the people that were bullied for so long. It means you're going to always have that perpetrator going out there and bullying people because they are never going to be approached Here and I'm have a head-on a, a conversation of the harms that they ultimately perpetr perpetrate at the end of the day. People. The last thing that they talk about is that it's not something that is mentally affecting them. We think that in of itself is for because whether you like it or not, people in the context that Liam, Liam said actually shows that at the end of the day... Speaker, can you confirm that the legalization of phenomenal issues does not ensure safety in the society and community? It is true that it doesn't uh, ensure safety, but what it does do is allow them to have a step ahead towards being a part of conversation. It's impossible for you to be in part of conversation if it's not legalized. So at the end of the day, they were talking about the mental issue. We think at the end of the day, these people exist in a society where the religion confines them, the morals confine them. So we think on a mental aspect, these people go through things like depression, anxiety, and we can't expect them to say that that is not important. Liam comes and tells you three Point. fundamental things throughout this debate. He tells you the aspect of progress. How do we progress in a society where we are unable to be a part of the conversation? How do we engage the outside community if we are continuously going to be in a closet? But above and beyond, Joy. how do we reach Hello. freedom at the end of the day? Yes? You say South Africa has uh, decriminalized homosexuality, but uh, it is ineffective. Is that what you're saying? Because it sounded like that. We said those societies have already decriminalized homosexuality. So therefore, they are already existing in a safe space. We're talking about a society in which these individuals want to, not a safe space, but a living in a free society like heterosexuals. But in the reason why you want to create a safe space is because you know that they don't exist in a society where they are considered. At the end of the day, we tell you that for freedom to be met, for the queer community to have the actualization that heterosexual people have, they need to to be able to, one, be able to be a part of the conversation, but two, be able to be free enough to actually converse about those things. But we don't get that when they are constantly being in the dark, but above and beyond that, they are constantly becoming victims because they are afraid to ultimately go out there. We think at the end of the day, we need to understand one thing. Those safe spaces can be good, but at the end of the day, do they outweigh the harms? And we tell you no. Why? Because it's a short term solution when long term problems are going to consistently exist. It means you're going to solve the problem of we are safe today, but how many years are you going to stay in those gated communities? How many years are people going to be feeling as if they cannot express themselves? That was their burden as the entire opposition bench to prove that that was sustainable, but they failed dismally. Therefore, we are proud to propose. Thank you. That was the government whip. That was the government whip. Please let's note that members are allowed to decline no, not more than two points of information. The third one must always be accepted. So now it is time for the opposition whip. Can you come forward? Panel, 
the opening government has managed to bring into light the extremes of vulnerability associated with marginalized communities, such as the LGBTQI. Now, given the facts of the vulnerability of the LGBTQ community and the sociality of human nature, the importance of safe spaces is at prime most expressed. Why? Because the ultimate purpose of safe spaces is to provide an escape from the harsh societies victimizing marginalized communities, such as the LGBTQI. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, the opening opposition perpetuated that the creation of safe spaces fuels sustainable livelihoods approach. We think that every member of a society is entitled into providing something that is beneficial to the community. Now, at the end of the day, in order to fully explore the members, the, in order to fully explore the things that a member of a community is willing to um, bring into the community, it is when we fully understand that member. Now, self spaces provide an, an environment for the LGBTQI to fully express themselves so that we can better understand Parity. where they're coming from and where they're going, so that we can better understand what they have to bring into the community and into the society. Now, ladies, without self space to turn into the LGBTQ community, we we'll would probably lose some marbles because these places are an opportunity for the members of the community to simply be people without having to explain, define, excuse, or justify themselves, which is the harsh reality of the society. Accepted. Okay, how do you then get to explore them or get to initiate their freedom when they're only engaging themselves in those spaces? Okay, now phenomenal ethical issues does not really mean that uh, phenomenal ethical issues and self spaces are not only limited to a specific group. What I'm saying is that the provision of self spaces is not limited only to the LGBTQI society. No, but self spaces are an environment where they can be able to express themselves without being judged. Meaning any member of the society, whether or not they are part of the LGBTQI society, can be a part of the self spaces as long as they are willing not to judge, infringe, or victimize them at the end of the day. Now, panel, we are saying that. Um, uh, we have understood and accepted that at the end of the day, the LGBTQI society has been a, a largely growing community in our societies, even in Zimbabwe, although it is illegal. So at the end of the day, we're saying that the fact that the issues of sexuality are phenomenal ethical issues, they cannot have changed just with the snap of a finger or over the night. It takes a while to finally change the orientation of people's minds concerning issues of eth ethnicity and sexuality. So at the end of the day, we agree that yes, self spaces provide a temporal, um, a temporal self environment for the LGBTQI information accepted. Are you saying that since LGBT is a major issue that is very controversial, so we should like take an easy space and just let the LGBTQ suffer? What I said is that phenomenal ethical issues cannot change overnight, but they take time. So at the end of the day, considering the time frame that must be taken in order for ethical issues to change or to bring about change in the society, we still need the LGBTQI community members to be safe at the end of the day. So we're providing a self space where they can be able to express themselves without fear of being victimized, without fear of being judged, while the countries, the states, and the societies are working on changes in order to accept them. So, spaces, self spaces are mandatory as it initiates the drive of self-contentment and acceptance without fear of being hurt physically or emotionally. So the, LG, the LGBTQI people are more likely than non-LGBTQI people to experience violent victimization. Hence, bringing about self spaces will not only provide a temporal satisfaction to them, but a long-lasting sense of belonging and acceptance. With that, I thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was indeed a tough and stiff competition. But anyways, it is what it is. So for this moment, we're just going to take a short break so, so that we wait for our adjudicators to make a deliberation. But after the break, we'll just be having a conversation with the young ones, with the young people here, the contestants, as yeah, we just have to loosen up and talk about the experience and much other stuff. So stay tuned right here on Say What 5th edition of this hashtag sassy national debate. So right now it is the segment whereby I'm sure everyone is tired. Everyone is tired, right? Cut. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So it's a, yeah, it's a time whereby we are still digesting what just what just happened. We're like, what just happened? Yes. So uh, starting with cut. Yes. Uh, was this different from round one, or it's just the same? It is very much so. Actually, I think it is more energy. People are more confident, and I think like people got into their zones. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are more you know composed than the previous rounds. All right, Midland State University. Seems like you're tired now. The first round, you were all energetic. Are you okay, guys? Yes, we are. Did these new guys really exhaust you? <laughs> yeah. What's up? No, Tell me. We fine. You sure? Yes. All right. All right. Ulawa, your polytechnic. How was this round? How was it different from the first round? It was a bit interesting. Then everyone was please on the puts up. for more. Speak up okay. Please try not to click your phone because uh, oh, right. your pen okay. is on camera. Uh, we won't know where it's coming from. Um, Maria, right? Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Please do speak up, sir. Okay. Uh, it was more exciting, so people got geared for real action and people actually reached the momentum of debating. Mm. Yeah. Lepana State University did everything go according to plan. I'm sure that this round you had like a plan for this round, did it? It definitely felt much better. Uh, yeah, I feel like I actually built up more um, momentum in this round. And you say, guys, why, why are you so shy? Why, what's happening? People are down. Like, was it really that exhausting? <laughs> yeah, <we laughs> yeah. People are so they're like shying. Why? It's been a it's long not, day. It's not, it's not like we're shy, <laughs> but we are tired. You're tired. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I would say this round was different because the motion was different. And mm-hmm. So, otherwise, that is all for me. Mm. Yeah. Midlands, are you okay? I'm not no, used I, to seeing you like this. <laughs> yes, I, I think if you're basing on the previous round, yes. remember the energy was more influenced by the long time rivalry. All right. Of course. Yes. So it had to be that way. Mm-hmm. But then in this one now, it's no longer just about traditional rivalries, but it's. Well, so that one was because University of Zimbabwe is involved. No, between me and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some personal things to do. You, all right. Yeah, he's my old friend. So mm. the atmosphere when we met in a debate room goes like that. But now in this case, it's totally different. All right. It's totally demanding something different. All right. So from Bulawa, your Polytechnic, uh, I just want to know what are you doing? Earlier on, we didn't ask for that. Uh, the programs that you're actually studying. I'm doing diesel plant engineering. Diesel plant engineering, ma'am. I'm doing civil engineering. All right. So as a civil engineer, I want to know what, uh, at the end, what, what, what do you want to, what, what's, what's your dream? What do you want to become? As a civil engineer. You want to be, it's, a, it's just a civil engineer. As in, you're saying what I want to do as, an, as a civil like engineer. Like the moment that you, you get your degree. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, my aim is actually getting a master's degree in project management. Mm. So this is just more like uh, my road to... My master's degree. To, oh, right. Mm. So yeah, probably I'm going to have to take a break after I take my de- after I get my degree in civil engineering. I will definitely do that and do some civil engineering stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She's not really that confident when it comes to that. And sir, so, what's the goal after we are done with getting our diploma? Oh, our diploma. Yes. Uh, um, that guy who's full of ambitions. Yes. Uh, most like I'm um, ma- fascinated with things that have to do with aircraft, mm-hmm. these modern Tesla cars and so forth. So my vision is to actually uh, bring about a project that will shine actually Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. That will actually uh, bring a better engineer gesture to the Zimbabwean guys. So uh, trust me with this. Yeah, a new Tesla car is coming from Zimbabwe. It's mm. lovely to see ambitious young people. Okay, welcome back. It is the hashtag Sassy Debate, the national com- debate competition. So, as always, yeah, we're about to announce the results. And as always, as uh, we always have the fourth place, the third place, yeah, the others. But anyway, so we're going to start with the fourth place. At fourth place is Wulawayo Polytechnic. Third place. 
Lupane State University. Now, the winner, the winner is, the winner is, let me see you and Carter, are you ready? <laughs> okay, the winner, it is Midlands State University, a round of applause. So once again, it was quite an interesting and thrilling episode of the Save What National Sassy Debate Competition. So until next time, we shall meet once again. And from us, Save What, and me, your debate master, Titinda Prince Chitinene. Thank you so much and goodbye. On your dream, work, work, work on the dream, work, work, work on the dream, work, work, work on the dream. I got a dream when you know you have a dream, work, work, work. I got a dream.